Hi, so following on from my video on how I get paid to wait for my investments, today I am going to show you exactly how to do this inside of the Saxo Trader Go platform. This is the brokerage account that I use and I think they have one of the best and simplest platforms out there. If you have a different platform, try and apply these same steps to your platform. If you have interactive brokers, I will actually be doing a tutorial on that soon as well. If you don't know what a put option is, please go back and watch my video called Selling Put Options, How I Get Paid to Wait, like Buffett and Bill Town. There I explain what I am doing and what the point of all this is. Okay, let's now jump into Saxo Trader Go and go through the steps one by one. Okay, the first step is to obviously log in and choose an individual stock. Let's use Berkshire Hathaway as our example. So I'm actually just finding this on my watch list, but you can just search for it up here as well in the Find Instruments section. Uh, not all companies will have options on the platform. I know, for example, Serotid Growth Properties isn't on Saxo Trader Go platform as an options play, but I know it does on Interactive Brokers, so it just depends on the platform. So here's Berkshire Hathaway. I click on this, and what I'm going to do now is I want to click on the option chain. Here it is here, option chain. All right. Now, the next thing we have to do is we have to make sure the settings are all correct. So. For the strikes, we want to make sure that says all. And we want to change the expiry date to something around two to four months away. So at the moment, it says January 2021. Now, I'm in January 2021 and when I'm recording this video, so I want something a bit further away. Uh, somewhere between 60 and 120 days, and I'll explain later why, why it should be between that range. Uh, but for now, just I'm going to click on March 2021. All right, and then just scroll down a little bit. Okay, now all of this stuff here, all this information that you can see here on the screen where my mouse is, everything on the left is what's called the calls and everything on the right is called the puts. We're just gonna focus on the right-hand side where the puts are. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to find the strike price we have already decided on. Now for me, I want to buy Berkshire Hathaway at $215. So I scroll down until I find 215 here in the middle. Here it says, it says strike. So in this middle row, I, this middle column, I'm looking for 215. Here it is here, 215. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is I need to run a calculation on our return on investment. So you can see there is the difference between the bid, which is this one here, and the ask. Now this is normal and the ask is always going to be bigger than the bid. Mm, don't worry about these words too much, but if you really wanna know, well, the bid is for uh, people selling the contract and ask is for people buying the contract. Now, what I like to do for the calculation is pick a number somewhere in the middle. Uh, let's go a little bit closer towards the ask. Now, I actually want to get the $3.20 here because, well, I'll explain a little later why I want $3.20 as the minimum. Uh, and as you'll know that all contracts, if you watch my previous video, all contracts are 100 shares. So $3.20 times 100 is $320. So multiply this number by 100 and it is how much money we will profit from selling the contract. Now don't forget that if the price falls to 215 over these 72 days, well, we need to have the cash to buy 100 shares at $215. That's $21,500 of cash we must keep just in case. So to decide how much we are getting as a return on investment, we type into the calculator 325 divided by 21,500, which is what we'd spend if we had to buy it. And that'll give us this number here, multiply that by 100 to get us a percent, and it's 1.51%. Now to calculate this as an annualized rate, we go to this website, and I'll have a link in the description. We enter the information, so we've got 72 days is this contract, and the return percentage, and we press annualize, and tells us it's gonna be 7.9%, about 8%. Now, I like to see anything over an annualized rate of 8% because it is free money. We are getting paid to wait. Now, I strongly recommend going back to the previous episode and watching it because I explained the risks and everything you need to know. So 7.9% for this example, I'm gonna go through with it. I normally look for 8% as my minimum. Lucky, this is pretty close. All right, now let's actually compare this with the June options. So we go back into the options chain. And we changed the date from, it was, it was March, and now we're changing it to June, which is 163 days away. And for our strike price at $215, we see that it's around about $7 or so. 
So let's use seven dollars. So seven times 100 shares is 700 dollars. And that's what we'd get for a contract, but it's 163 days, remember. So the calculation to get the percentage would be 700 divided by 21,500 equals about three point, times that by 100, sorry. 3.26%, roughly, 3.26%. Now we go back to our calculator and we go to, we change the return to 3.26% and the days is 163 days and we gotta beat the 7.9 number and it's actually less, okay, 7.45%, which is actually, so a little lot worse than the March option. Now, even if the amount received here is a little larger or well, the length of time is longer, if this was the case, I'd always take the shorter option. It gives less time for things to dramatically change in the company. Plus, in 72 days, we can decide what to do next instead of waiting 163 days. Okay, so let's go back and try an even shorter time frame. So we're looking at June, let's try in 44 days here for February, so late February. And let's have a look at these numbers for $215. Okay. It looks like it's about $1.40, let's say, $1.40 or so. Now there's actually gonna be a $3 fee and that starts to play into the smaller and smaller time frames. We don't want to have to trade every two weeks for just say $50 and pay $3 in fees each time. That's just way too much. So I like to keep the fees lower than 1%. Therefore, it has to be a minimum of $300 that I get as the premium. So for February 19th, 44 days away, the premium is only about a dollar forty-five, maybe. And so that's obviously times that by a hundred, so only $145. Look, that's well under my minimum of 300, so we can just rule this one out. Okay, so that 7.9% annualized rate is a good deal for much. I definitely want to buy Berkshire Hathaway shares at $215, and I'll be really happy if this happens. I might as well get paid the $320 as well. Maybe in 62 days, I can do it again and get paid again. Okay, so make sure we have the right dates and the right strike price. And to sell the contract, we click the bid number. So March 2021, $215. We're in the put side. Okay, we want to click this bid, the bid option here. Okay, so let's click that. And a trade ticket comes up. Okay, now here are all the settings that you want. We definitely want it to be limit. The buy sell, we want sell to open. Now for quantity, we wanted one. Now, if you have lots of money, you can change this higher. But remember, one actually equals 100 shares. So two would be 200 shares. And in this case, $43,000 worth. So just be extra careful here. The expiry, this should be correct automatically. The strike, the pr this is the price you want to buy the shares for. So Berkshire is 215, that's right. The call or the put, we want it to be a put. The price, now we actually have to adjust the price to the price we had used in the calculation. So we wanted 320. Okay, and GTC, which means good till canceled, we wanna make sure that's in, the, in, in play as well. Now, what we can do here is we scroll down and we actually can double check uh, all the fees are low, normally about $3. If it is crazy high fees, it's mean, it means you've made a mistake. Okay, and if you're happy, just press place the order. All right, now that's just a confirmation. And then I'm gonna confirm the order. Okay, and now the order has been placed. Now the order might go through immediately or you might have to wait for someone in the world to accept your contract. Now don't stress. I left actually one of mine for 10 days before. Then I checked my account and someone had taken my contract about a week after I placed the order. Okay, to work out which companies that I wanna do this for, I go through each of my company's options chain. I write down the strike price that I have already found from my wish list. I got these numbers by doing a full analysis of the company and deciding through my valuation methods what price I would like to invest. I then go and get the put options prices just like I did in the earlier example where I did the Berkshire Hathaway example. Then I look at only the ones that will be at least $300. I do this because I have to pay a $3 fee and that's 1%. So I don't wanna pay more than that just for this trade. I then calculate, just like I did earlier, the best annualized return rate from the different timeframes. That's for, in this example, 60 days, 88 days, and so on for the bigger timeframes. So as you can see, I only actually have six possible candidates. Now, Nvidia is at 4.4% and that's well below my 8% minimum. So I can rule them out for today. 
The rest of these look really good. Alibaba, I've actually already done before, but I haven't done Berkshire Hathaway until today. Now, when I actually made this table, it was 16 days ago, therefore the prices have changed. 16 days ago, I could have sold the same contract as I bought today and got $455 for Berkshire Hathaway. So as time gets closer to the expiration, the rates get lower. That's why we calculate the annualized return on investment so we can compare apples to apples. And that's it. My account will go up by $320 when this deal goes through. And that's how it is done. And as you can see, some of the returns are really high. 14.4% for Biogen at the moment. I've actually heard of numbers getting really high for other companies like 50% plus. But look, these are the companies that I've already researched and I really like these companies and I actually want to invest in these. Some of those companies that you have these options, these annualized returns, uh, they're really high annualized returns. Some of these companies I don't really want to play with. Like Tesla, for example, is quite a volatile stock. The options there are really good. Um, so look, that's something for you to decide based on your wish list. So please hit the like button if this helped you. Subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my future videos and I will see you next time.